Hey there, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani. It's a great Friday here. It's beautiful out in Austin, Texas. Today we're going to talk about heavy metals and how to test for them and how to treat them. So off the bat, I'm trying to make this under five minutes. I may go a little over, but let's try to dig in and see what we can get accomplished. So off the bat, what, what kind of heavy metals are we concerned about? In some of the panels that I'll run, we'll run a broad spectrum of metals and some will be just metals like copper and tin and things and other ones will be more heavy metals like the arsenic, the cadmium, the aluminum, the mercury and the lead. Now these metals aren't so good, right? They are toxic to your neuro system, to your neurological nervous system. Really important, right? Remember the Mad Hatter from Alice in Wonderland, Lewis's Carol, Lewis Carroll's book back about 100 years ago? They had the character the Mad Hatter. And back in that day in the late 1800s, maybe early 1900s, the inside part of the hat was actually lined with mercury. People would literally go mad and they called it Mad Hatter disease because they were going mad from their hats. So kind of just give you that perspective. Now these metals are synergistic in a bad way. So if you look at the lethal dose of one or the lethal dose of 1%, so you give 100 rats a dose of lead that's titrated up gradually until one dies. That's the lethal dose of 1%. So now you have that dose for lead. We put it aside. We pull over the mercury now. We lay out a different set of 100 rats. We titrate up the mercury now to the first rat dies. That's the lethal dose of 1% for mercury. Now we have the lethal dose of 1% for mercury, lethal, lethal dose of 1% for lead, and we combine them together, get a fresh set of 100 rats, give that dose to all of them, and guess how many die? All of them. If you said all of them, you're right. So even though only 1% died on the lead, 1% on the mercury, when you combine them, they're synergistically bad, right? Like Dr. Evil on steroids. So we want to definitely decrease our environmental exposure. The biggest exposure will be silver or mercury-based amalgam fillings. That's your biggest. So if you have those, seeing a, biological, a biologically trained dentist over at iaomt.org, see below for details, is a great first step. Also avoiding the high uh, mercury to selenium ratio fish, shark, pilot whale, swordfish, those things are really important. So off the bat, these are the main ones we're looking at, especially the lead and the mercury because of their lethal dose of 1% that I mentioned earlier. Types of heavy metal testing, we can look at blood, urine, urine with provocation, as well as hair. Now, blood's gonna be good more for acute heavy metal exposure. Let's say you're concerned that maybe your child's eating paint chips, right? They got an old house past 1978. There's paint in their house that has lead in it. They're eating paint chips. We run a blood test, oh, the lead's high. Someone that's working in an environmental area that may have heavy metals in the area, right? So that can be good for acute exposure to blood. After a day or two, that lead is gonna be in the blood and then into the tissue. So blood will be a really good window into acute exposure from these heavy metals. Next. We have hair, I'll skip down to hair. Hair's gonna be a good longer term exposure, but hair, again, with good detoxification, you will push more heavy metals into your hair. There are some studies looking at autistic kids, autistic children, and they found that they actually had less mercury in their hair than their counterparts that weren't autistic. So the ones who were autistic, less mercury in the hair. The ones that weren't autistic, more mercury in the hair. Now, when it comes down to it, part of the detoxification pathways eventually push mercury and heavy metals potentially out the hair. So the hair is not the best indicator because low detoxification pathways will prevent those metals from ending up in the hair. Next we have urine and urine with provocation. So urine gives us a really good window because the provocation agents can get into the tissues. They have a high affinity, right? It's like a magnet. The stronger the magnet pulls, that pull is the affinity. And that provocation agent can get into the tissue and get into certain cells of the body and act like a magnet and pull metals out of those tissue, whether it's brain, bones, heart, lungs, fat cells. Fat's a big area for storage metals. So we can get in there and get a good pull out of that. Again, urine without the provocation agent won't be as beneficial, but doing the provocation agent will really give you a good window. Now there's a couple different provocation agents. There's um, DMSA or 2,3-dimercaptosacinic acid. You have DMPS, 2,3-dimercaptoproponic dimer, acid. You have EDTA as well. Those are the big three. DMSA, DMPS, EDTA. And they're like the magnet that goes in and pulls those metals out of that tissue. 
Now again, if you're having active neurological issues, may not be the best thing to do chelation off the bat. I've seen people literally suffer from paralysis as a result of doing a heavy metal cleanse with provocation agents when they're very sensitive. So you really wanna get their nervous system kind of more relaxed with healthy diet and lifestyle, and maybe even hold off on doing any provocation testing for a month or two to get things dialed. And I typically do not recommend looking at the treatment side, touching the heavy metals from a treatment perspective. Testing may be okay, but treatment perspective until the hormones are stabilized, the blood sugar and the diet stabilized, and the gut's working. Because one of the main methods of detoxification is hepatobiliary. Here's your gallbladder. That gallbladder is gonna shoot out a whole bunch of bile here. And uh, some metals and such can be in that bile. And that will make its way down the intestinal tract. Right, this is your large intestine right here, and then this is the toilet, <laughs> right? So we can actually remove a lot of metals via the stool. So if we have poor bowel motility, or we don't have good, we don't have good bile function, if we have slow motility or slow transit time, we're backed up, that's gonna mean that we could potentially reabsorb a lot of those chemicals. So we really wanna make sure that we have really good digestion. We wanna make sure our body's ability to regulate inflammation with our adrenal glands is stronger so the inflammation that's stirred up from removing these metals, our body can tolerate it and handle it. And also making sure like certain nutrients like selenium are in high amounts because selenium is a natural chelator for mercury. And again, in my heavy metal clear product, we put a couple things in there like EDTA, chlorella, cilantro, and NAC and garlic and a lot of these sulfur, um, compounds that really help the phase to detoxification and some binders that can really bind up a lot of these metals and allow it to go through the bile out into the toilet through the stool much easier. So again, do not jump at doing heavy metals right away. It's kind of one of those things that you wanna, once you know there are metals there, I wanna just get them out, may not be the best thing initially. Work through the body system approach, body system one hormones, two gut infections, then work on detox at the end and work on the nutrients, decrease the exposure to um, silver fillings. If you have them, get them removed properly by an IAOMT.org certified dentist. Certain vaccines, the flu is a big one, 25 micrograms of ethyl mercury in there. And really just do your best environmentally, air filters, and do uh, cleanses yearly with phase one and phase two detoxifying nutrients and a good heavy metal test once a year to assess your heavy metal levels and work with your functional medicine doctor to get them lowered is essential. Again, this is Dr. J signing out. I'm a little bit over, I know, but just trying to provide extra value and give you lots of information. Click on screen, subscribe, and if you need to reach out to get more specific help, reach below and we can work on digging and, and creating a functional medicine program that gets to the root cause of your issues. Again, this is Dr. J signing off. Have an awesome weekend. Thanks.